Embrace Unveiled. Boston's new public work of art honors Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King's ties to Boston. The memorial and public space is on the Boston Common, where in 1965, Dr. King called for Boston to be a testing ground for the ideal of freedom and equality. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. That effort was years in the making, and our Sarah Kanji was there for its impressive debut. America. A celebration on the common of Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King, who first met in Boston while studying here. We celebrate this daughter and son of America who came to this city, found each other, and together changed history. The special gathering welcoming the newest monument on the nation's oldest park. The drape came down, officially unveiling the embrace. Amazing. It was amazing. It's something out of this world. A 22-foot bronze sculpture depicting the king's arms and their love. The artwork has been years in the making, and the moment proved overwhelming for those who have led the project. I'm just so grateful to give something back to this city that gave me so much. While the sculpture may be the star of the show, one of the speakers today stole the spotlight. I love this monument. Dr. and Mrs. King's 14-year-old granddaughter. This is almost like Love 360 because this monument is dedicated to their love and we really need more love in this world. And joining us now is the executive director of Embrace Boston, Amari Paris Jeffries. We're so pleased to have you with us I'm here in so the studio. Happy to be uh, here. You know, a whirlwind of celebrations for you uh, this weekend. It was an emotional moment, an historic one. What was it like for you, watching that crowd yesterday? Well, I'm about to cry right now seeing <laughs> the the recap footage. It, it was it was amazing. It was the culmination of years and years of feelings about not only our, our city's love for the King family, but our, our, our love and desire to tell a complete full story about Boston where black family, black joy, and, and black love is included. Mm. And so many special moments. Uh, we showed a clip from the uh, speech of the granddaughter of the Kings, Yolanda Renee She's King. She's amazing. amazing. Another standout moment. I was ready to cast my vote for her for president right there in the minute. You know, oratory must run through their bloodlines because it just got better and better. We had three members of the King family there speaking, and, and Yolanda stole the show. Mm. And so it, yes, she, 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 her, her impact and um, really her sentiment and thought as a young person really spoke to the future of this memorial and, and, and really why we created, one of the reasons why we created it. Um, what was it like for you to watch everyone walk up under and through the monument after the curtain was dropped? Yeah, you know, I, I've gotten to hear thousands and thousands of King stories and people talking about moments where they met King, met Mrs. King, uh, moments where they, they met uh, Hubie Jones, Mel King, some of the other leaders that we memorialized, got to spend time with some of their families mm -hmm. and just felt humbled to be a part of this process to, to honor those local families, those unsung heroes that, that you and I have heard about and seen every day in our, in our lives, our, our churches, our community. And you know, for uh, those that still don't know, the design was based on this photo that uh, we're gonna show now. It's a photo of the couple taken in 1964 when uh, Dr. King was awarded the Nobel Prize. And, and was it always the intention to have Coretta be a part of this memorial? Was that the plan from the beginning? You know, it, it wasn't. Um, you know, originally our, our name and people probably knew us as MLK Boston when we first started mm -hmm. out because we wanted to build a memorial for Dr. King. And we soon realized through the submissions, uh, there were 126 submissions, there were five finalists. We had a community vote, and if people remember, we voted in post offices and city hall and online. And Hank Willis Thomas and Mass Design Group, their, were, their submission was the only one that included Mrs. King mm -hmm. in, in their submission. And we knew right away. So that was the one. There was no Dr. King without a Mrs. King. And you know, for folks who, who know, you know, Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. And for folks who, was, who were born after 68, our, our, our story of their work, 
<laughs> was directly from the voice of Mrs. King. Mrs. King is how I learned about Dr. King's legacy. Um, I've got to see her live on TV. Uh, she was the one responsible for ensuring that the King holiday was a federal holiday, and it wasn't until the year 2000 that feels so close mm -hmm. that this holiday was celebrated in all 50 states. And, and that she, was the, she carried on his dream and his legacy. Right. So we had the unveiling uh, this past Friday. The sculpture is done, but there's more for Embrace Boston. Tell us what else you have planned. Well, you know, we, we imagine by 2030, Boston's 400th birthday, that, that the city is going to be a different place. And the memorial is just part of this wave of change happening throughout the city. And so you can anticipate a center in Parcel 3, and Parcel 3 is a 7.8 acre uh, urban renewal piece of land. Uh, and if you remember ur urban renewal where black and brown neighborhoods were being demolished, uh, this is the last undeveloped parcel in Roxbury uh, that's a part of that dark era. And so we mm -hmm. hope to land there and build the center there in the next couple of years. We're looking at some architectural renderings right now. So tell us what we are seeing there. Yep, you know, it's two life sciences centers and five residential buildings and, and then a 31,000 square foot culture, art, live music venue space. Uh, it's only part of our work. We also do research and policy, and so this is part of this larger storytelling we want to start transforming Boston with. It's absolutely beautiful. So much to do. Uh, and Amari, thank you for joining us and talking about the Embrace. Thank uh, you for and having what's me. what's next for Boston. Happy MLK Day. Yeah, you know, the, I want, before we go, I just wanted to, to ask about something I was not aware of. Um, I saw in some of the news coverage the brass markers in the ground around the monument. Tell us what that was all about. And, you know, that, that is how we are memorializing those, those 65 other, other leaders in, in, in a permanent way. And there was a, a also a call for proposal. People voted. Uh, there were probably about 140 unique submissions. We had a selection committee that was chaired by uh, former city councilor Tito Jackson and Lermerchi Frazier. And um, we, we had the tough decision of choosing 65 leaders that we want to permanently memorialize on the plaza. So, so tell us what some of those names are and what they symbolize. Yeah, you know, some of them are folks that we know, Hubie Jones, Mel King, Mel Nia Cass. Uh, you know, so many people thought Mel Nia Cass was just a street name. Uh, she was the mother of Roxbury, and uh, a lot of us can trace our mentoring lineage from her work. Uh, Ruth Batson. Um, uh, just you know, so many. So, so many names, yeah. so many names. Um, and, you know, some unsung heroes, Miss Clara Bell, um, who was a, a, the secretary who um, was responsible for King's return in 1965 at 12th Baptist Church and was so honored to be able to not only name folks that people have heard about, but some unsung heroes that were uh, worthy to be memorialized. So much there, so much history, so many layers. Amari, now we're going to let you go because right. <laughs> you have so much going on this Thank weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us and sharing the experience of unveiling the Embrace, one of the largest monuments to racial and social equity and of love. Up next, a closer look at another civil rights icon, the film that documents the path of the rebellious life of Mrs. Rosa Parks.